Oh, these are perfect. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect size. I could eat a dozen of these yes. very, very easily, yeah. very easily, with and half a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. and, but it's the perfect oyster garnish. Yes. On a seafood dish as well. Mm -hmm. Bit of turbot, very, mm -hmm. very lightly poached. Yeah. The juice is just whisked in with a bit of salty butter as well. Squeeze a lemon juice, some fresh chives, and then the whole lot poured over the piece of turbot. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a bit pecky. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing to remember is there will always be some people who will be a bit squeamish about eating oysters au naturel. Yeah. And yet the pleasure that you can get from eating an oyster is deprived of them unless you serve them something cooked, only lightly cooked. We'll take them to the local pub. It'll be warmer there. Just as Jasper says, some of the locals aren't partial to the delicacy on their doorstep. But Richard Corrigan is the world's number one oyster fan. He likes a challenge, and he reckons he can win them over. The perfect oysters. Okay. Huh? I mean, the bounty from Strangford Lock, yeah? I, I'd never kind of, uh, I mean, I like my muscle, like my seafood, but oysters I just, you know, not quite sure about, so. I got a bad one in Galway Bay once, and I was sick within 10 minutes, and I have not dared eat one since, you know? Mm -hmm. Here, chef, come over here. What do you think? Gordon, please. There you go. Great job. Mm. There you go. Mm. Very good. Delicious. As I say, the fresh taste of the sea. There you go. I wasn't expecting to like them, but uh, but they were all right. Yeah, nice. I think that's brilliant, mm. Jasper. Have a safe journey back. Thank you very much. Hey, success. Richard's sales skills have definitely converted the bargoers. Face to face again in the great British menu kitchen, rival chef Paul Rankin is trying to knock Richard's choice of menu. Oysters for a banquet, though, eh? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They're cooked as well. They're not raw, so they are, oh, no. cooked. They are cooked out. Yeah, you're living on the edge there, Richard. A little, Oysters a little, and seaweed. A little, a little bit on the edge. I think I've got I this I live one. on the edge. Paul thinks he made a better choice yesterday with his starter and is confident that he's got this course right too. Look at the colour of that. He chose trout months ago because he believes that it's a classic British fish dish. I mean, we've always had rivers and lakes full of trout all across the UK. But it's kind of a forgotten fish because um, we have so much farm trout about nowadays, which is not nearly as good as the wild product. So that's all about our local ingredients in that season. The trout will be lightly seared and served on green vegetables with a citrus butter vinaigrette. One whole fillet each? No, God no. Half a fillet. You're a bit tight with the portion, are you? Not many people can eat like you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, they look great. Don't they just? I'd yeah. love to see sort of things all prepped up, neatly lying in a row, you know? So why did you decide on trout? I think it's, it's kind of one of those old-fashioned products, which is just terrific. Um, to me, salmon's become a little bit commonplace. It is more unusual, isn't it, to, to yeah. trout? Yeah, and, and to me, it's like really something special. You know, you've gone to the effort to get wonderful wild trout. And from Ireland? Yeah, yeah, from... from uh, Loch Ney. Ah, oh, wow. In Northern Ireland, so. So a true.